Hi, I'm Andy Glass with WorkshopBatic.com. Today we have an exclusive first-hand look at Makita's new cordless miter saw. It's their X2 36-volt cordless sliding compound miter saw, model number XSL06Z. Now this is a bare tool. It does not come with a battery or a charger. We'll cover some quick specs and then we'll walk around the unit. I'll show you how to interact and articulate some of the features on it. And then we'll talk about our experience and what our impressions are of this saw. Now the size and weight of this unit come in pretty large and hefty at 31 and 3 quarter inches by 25 and 3 eighths by 26 inches and a total weight of 60.2 pounds. So it is pretty large and pretty heavy but that comes in at some benefits depending on what your applications are on the job site or in your workshop. It has a crown capacity of 6 and 5 eighths inches and a baseboard capacity of 5 and 1 quarter. It has a max bevel angle of 48 degrees both to the left and right side of the blade. A max cross cutting capacity of 12 inches. When you initially get the saw, the blade is not included during shipping. To install the blade or replace the blade in the future is very easy. Remove the included Allen wrench on the front of the slide rails and loosen the bolt that secures the guard mechanism in place. Once the bolt is removed, you can now swing the guard mechanism out of the way and have access to the arbor bolt. With the same Allen wrench, use a clockwise motion while holding the arbor lock on the right side of the saw head. This will loosen the arbor bolt and allow you to remove the outer washer. Place the blade on and replace the outer washer and tighten the arbor bolt with a counterclockwise motion while using the arbor lock. Once the arbor bolt is secure, position the blade guard mechanism back in place and tighten the securing bolt. This saw of course is cordless and it's powered by two Makita 18 volt LXT batteries that are very impressive and deliver plenty of power. Just like any new tool, you want to check that the factory has set it up properly. Sometimes they need a little bit of tuning and sometimes they're correct right out of the box. First, remove your battery pack so the saw does not turn on and take a high quality square and place it against the fence of the saw and while avoiding the teeth, check the blade for square in both the miter orientation and while the square is on the deck of the saw in the bevel orientation. Once the saw is checked, make a test cut and check your material. We didn't have anything close to the full width capacity of the saw, but that will give you a better indication of how square the saw is. Make any adjustments according to the manual if necessary. To make a miter cut, you simply loosen the large knob up front, use your thumb with your left or right hand, and then you're able to rotate the saw um, left or right. It has a max miter capacity of 60 degrees both left and right and it has detents at 0 degrees, 15, 22 and a half, 30, 31.6 and 45 and lastly the max of course of 60. If you want to bypass the detents there's a lever on the left hand side push that down it will hold down the thumb button and now you can slide quick and easily past all the detents if you desire. Once you have it set on where you'd like, let's just say we want to be at 22 and a half, lock that in position, the detents clicks in, and you can go ahead and tighten the large knob. In transportation and storage, the head of the unit might be in down in the lock position. To loosen that up or release it, pull this thumb stud right here, turn it 90 degrees, and now it's locked in position and you can now go up and down as you wish. To lock it, simply reverse it, push it all the way back, turn it 90 degrees, let it lock in position, and now the head is in the down position. This unit's sliding mechanism has a lock on it back here to the left. You will simply pull that out, rotate it 90 degrees, and now the unit can slide back and forth. If you just want a chop saw, again, rotate it back 90 degrees, have it lock in position, and now you can only do a chop. There is no sliding mechanism. This unit also does have a full max capacity in kind of chop saw mode. Um, you want to loosen the slide mechanism and then flip this lever and that'll allow you to have a uh, max cut capacity in chop saw mode. This unit has trenching capabilities which allows you to make a cut at a certain depth. To do this you simply push this black lever to the side that will close or block that hole and then you can use this um, large knob here on top to set the depth you want. You screw that in and that makes your cut more shallow. You screw that out and that allows you to go deeper and deeper. If you want to go back to full cut mode, simply slide that black lever back. Those two holes will line up and now you can make full depth cuts. This saw has integrated supports both on the left hand and right hand side of the blade. 
to extend them. There's a black knob here at the foot of the base and you can simply allow that to go in and out and tighten it in place. Uh, for transportation or storage, push them all the way in, tighten them down and you're good to go. When making a bevel cut with this unit, you need to remove the upper fence sections and to do that there's a black wing nut knob here on the back. You simply loosen that up and then the stud uh, gets removed from that socket and now the fence is removed and you can tilt that saw to make a bevel cut. To make a bevel cut with this unit, there is a locking knob on the front. You simply turn that counterclockwise to loosen the mechanism and now you can go to the left all the way to 45 and then to the right it stops automatically at 90 except there's a button down here. Release it off the 90 degree detent, push it in and now it allows you to uh, make a bevel cut to the right hand side. Again, you need to remove the upper sections of the fence if you are going to uh, make a bevel cut on this saw. If you go back to the left, that detent will kick back in place and now 90 degrees is set and you can lock it in place. There are detents on the saw, we'll bring you to the other side and I'll show you how that mechanism works. This unit does have positive stops at 0 degrees, 22 and a half, 33.9 and 49 degrees. Obviously the positive stop at 0 degrees, if you want to move that all the way past to 45, again there's a positive stop and it just locks in position. All you need to do is tighten the handle over here. If you want to hit the 33.9 degree or 22 and a half degree detent, there is a lever right here. You simply rotate that down and now it will stop at that detent as you can see that lever or mechanism pushed in. If you want to bypass that and go to 22 and a half, pull it out and if you watch that detent again, it will go ahead and lock in position and now we are at 22 and a half degrees. You want to pull that out and rotate that up and you can now bypass both of those uh, positive detents. Put it back at zero, use your locking knob again to lock it in position. You can do the same thing to the right hand side of the blade. You can move it all the way past 45 with this lever here, move off the 45 degree detent, pull this 48 degree detent back that will bypass the 45 and allow you to go to a max bevel of 48 degrees both left and right side of the blade. Once you push back 45, that lever goes back in and now the positive stop is again at 45. This unit has two options of dust collection. They include this dust bag with a quick release clip for uh, quick and easy emptying. That connects to the back side of the saw. If you have a uh, shop vac or dust extractor, you can use this Y attachment that they include. It simply locks in with two little clicks on the base of this unit and the Y portion gets connected to the back of the saw and then you can connect a vacuuming source uh, or dust extractor to the back side of this port. Now the bag will not fit on there so you cannot use that um, but this mechanism allows you to connect it from the actual saw blade and then there's also a large dust port here at the bottom. This unit has a single laser but the flexibility to go both left and right side of the blade with this knob on the front. There are two detent stop screws or allen screws that you can adjust both left and right so that you can uh, align it to the thickness of your blade. Um, so simply just loosen this knob, uh, move it to the left or right side of the blade wherever you prefer and tighten it back down and you're ready to go. Now the front handle here has a lot going on. First, the trigger itself will not be pressed without you pressing this safety button right up here. Second, there is a dual battery indicator gauge, being this is a 36 volt unit, two 18 volt batteries, there are two batteries. Press the single button in the middle and it will tell you the battery level of both batteries with just a single press of that button. On the top right is the laser switch, it will turn on and off that laser. There is a switch so it will not uh, automatically go off and it can drain your battery, so be cognizant of that. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that look around the saw as far as features and how to articulate some of the uh, interactive items on the saw, such as beveling, mitering, uh, removing some of the fences and the detents and things like that. Um, overall, in our testing as well as our daily use here in our production woodworking shop has been very, very positive. This saw is incredibly powerful. Um, just take away the cordless factor, it is just powerful in general. The two combined LXT batteries for a 36 volt total power has, has the total power to do anything we throw at it. We did everything from dimensional lumber, softwoods, hardwoods, plywoods, uh, MDF, melamine, 
Um, anything we threw at it, this thing could handle. We even threw some, uh, I believe, six quarter hard maple at it, did some bevels, did some trenching, and it had absolutely no issues to it. Uh, the 40 tooth uh, factory blade that comes with it is pretty darn impressive as well. Now, if I was gonna use this saw on the job site specifically for crown or base molding or, or anything that you want to absolutely zero tear out, I would probably replace that blade and put in an 80 tooth uh, blade in there um, just to uh, hedge my bed and make sure to do everything I can to minimize tear out. Now there's a few main points that uh, we want to cover in our impressions or experiences uh, and thoughts on this saw. One is the size. The size is pretty large uh, for a cordless saw. In your mind you think of a cordless saw, you want something small, tight, compact. When we unbox this unit and started putting some of the accessories on it, um, we were like, holy buckets, this thing is pretty large, pretty heavy. Um, and then we got to thinking about it. Our cordless miter saw setup for the job site is typically on a Bosch anti-gravity stand. And really the weight and size doesn't matter because it's going into our job site trailer and it is what it is. Now, if you're someone that's gonna bring this on the job site and you're gonna carry it, maybe put it on a centipede, put it on a sawhorse or on a temporary work stand, well, then at that point, your size and weight becomes a, a big factor. And then at that point, I would recommend looking into a mobile miter saw stand just to take that concern out. As far as miter and bevel capacity, this thing is impressive with both 60 to the left and right, as well as 48 in the bevel capacity, both left and right. Um, there's literally nothing this thing can't do as, as far as range and uh, for, for both bevel and miter. More and more we're seeing cordless miter saws in permanent uh, woodworking shops and that is because of battery, battery technologies progressing as well as that consumer wants the ability to bring that saw out of their shop maybe for a deck project, a fence, uh, family, friends, things like that. Um, and it's something that they're dealing with. They're putting in the batteries every single time that they would happen to go dead and they're investing in that battery platform um, in their workshop. Now this uh, Makita unit is no different. Obviously the, the 18 volt batteries, the LXT batteries have a huge selection and offering that uh, in that 18 volt lineup. And so this would fit perfectly in that category. With that being said, if you're gonna put this saw in somewhat of a semi-permanent or permanent situation, the two forward facing rods for the linear guide system is extremely space saving and compact. You don't have to have that extra uh, area behind the saw to absorb the glide rods um, and, and push the saw away from the wall. We'll talk a little bit about runtime. We tested this saw with two full 5.0 amp hour batteries um, and we just went cut after cut in a 2x4 and ended up with 322 cuts in a single 2x4 on these two batteries and we were extremely impressed. Uh, not only that, but with the runtime, also with the dust collection. We had it connected to one of our dust extractors with the use of their um, Y, which connects to the base dust collection as well as the saw blade dust collection. And some of the uh, pictures that we're overlaying now, out of 322 cuts, that was all that was on the table after the dust collection. So we are extremely impressed with the dust collection on this saw, on this unit. And you can know that when you bring it into uh, the job site, if whether it's occupied or not, you know that this saw is going to be uh, well collected of the dust if you have it hooked up to a shop vac or a dust extractor. Now we did do some tests along with the bag. The bag worked okay, but we definitely had way better performance, obviously when you're hooking up to a vacuum source like a shop vac or dust extractor. One kind of bummer of this saw is you have to remove the upper fences when you're doing any sort of bevel on the saw. It's not too big of a deal. Uh, Makita designed the fences to be removed very, very quickly. A Literally a simple twist of the black wing nuts on the back and this just pops right off. And when you wanna put it right back on, you put it back on. It's something that uh, is just extremely uh, simple, but it, it should be known that um, if you're doing bevels a lot, you do need to remove that and that might take away some of your support. We touched on it earlier that this saw is pretty large, uh, but one benefit with that is the front or the base or the bed of the, the where you put rest your material is extremely large. It provides a lot of support for the material that you're putting on there, which is extremely handy. Um, and it's something uh, we appreciate as a consumer. 
The design of the horizontal handle is something that we really appreciate. It's got rubber overmold all around the handle, a full four finger trigger on it. So for prolonged uses, your fingers aren't going to get fatigued as well as the safety button. It's large. It's right there. It's easily accessible with your thumb or if you just want to grasp it uh, in the kind of webbing of your hand, you certainly can do that as well. The laser on this unit is pretty dang cool. We obviously covered it in the feature portion of it, but I wanted to give you a real life um, experience with that. In the workshop here, I'm left-handed. I love to have my uh, good material on the left. I want to cut on the right-hand side of the line, so I want my laser to be in the left-hand side of the blade. Matt, who comes in the workshop and helps me from time to time, is right-handed. He wants his material on the right-hand side, which he wants the blade on the left-hand side of the line. Ultimately, he wants the laser on the right-hand side of the blade. In some of the uh, saws that we've tested in the past, uh, unless they're dual lasers, which have a laser on both sides of the blade, at that point, it's a null, null point and, and doesn't matter. But if it only has one laser, uh, at that point, it's typically suited one way or the other, and either a left-hander or a right-hander, you're out. Well, with this uh, saw in the shop here and the laser um, feature that it has, it gives one person or the other the quick ability to go to left or right side of the blade in a matter of seconds. And with a system like that, you would think it'd be a little bit cumbersome or inaccurate, but there are two Allen wrenches to dial in those stop points can land right on your laser or right on your saw blade is uh, just ingenious and it's something we want to put together and put to use. Now this saw is going to be dedicated to our infield stuff here in the near future to really get a good handle on it and we're expected to put some more content out on our social media. So if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns about the Makita uh, X2 36 volt cordless miter saw, please let us know below. We'd love to provide some feedback, answer any questions you may have. As we mentioned earlier, follow us on social media. We do product updates, project updates, and exclusive social media giveaways. I'm Andy Glass with Workshop Attic. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.